I'm Luke Cyril. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. I thought it'd be fun to walk through a rig we did recently. It was for a video that was going to be like a, a reveal of a new space. It was like a warehouse slash loft, and, uh, but it was on ground level, thankfully. You know, high ceilings, big windows, just a big open area that was basically delineated by the furniture. Uh, so there's like a living area, meeting area, and then kind of like an office with a desk, and, and then there was this kitchen. And so the request from the DP was, uh, above the kitchen, could you rig a nice big soft light? And so a soft box, basically. And so uh, I did a scout and, uh, you know, scouts, if you can get a scout, it's so, so helpful because even if someone else takes photos uh, or even video, they're just not looking for the same things you might be looking for. It, it was a great space because there was exposed brick, uh, open uh, I-beam and uh, that was not enclosed in sheetrock so we could go to it. And on a, a job before this one, I'd been introduced to these uh, clamps. It's, a, it's an I-beam clamp. So it has a, um, an open jaw, fixed jaw, that uh, then you have two um, you know, hex key set screws that uh, fix it to the I-beam. So if you've got uh, an I-beam like that, then this would jam into the I-beam and then you've got a place to put your speed rail underneath. And they come in pairs from uh, modern studio equipment. And um, so you can either put two of them on the same I-beam and then you have two points on, on your uh, speed rail. Or you could put one on, on this I-beam and then if there's another I-beam at the same level, uh, a little ways away, you can put you know those two on and now you've got your I-beam and nine degrees to that, you've got uh, a piece of speed rail. So just a wonderful clamp for a very specific uh, use. And so we, we ended up uh, using these, uh, um, well, I only used three of these, but um, there's a reason for that. And that is on the back of this kitchen, there were two square beams and on the square beams, we couldn't use these because there's no exposed, uh, you know, uh, I beam blade there. So uh, we used uh, speed C's on on the on the two back uh, square beam. A speed C is basically a C clamp that's been cut in half, and then on each half there's a a, a sleeve for speed rail, and so you can make the C clamp as wide as you want. And at this point, I had ordered a bunch of, of these speed C's for a different job. And because I was going to put them on I-beam, I hadn't heard of these clamps yet. So I ordered these uh, uh, speed C's. And instead of getting a fixed side and, and a thread side, I, got, I, I asked that they'd all be thread size. So my thought was that if you've got this kind of deal you've got your i-beam and if you have a regular c-clamp it kind of goes here and then you have the threaded part here and then you have the sleeve and the sleeve and then you can put your speed reel in there right but this didn't seem like a good enough bite to me on on that side and especially the way Modern has uh, changed their design a little bit. This is pretty up and down. It's, uh, it just has a really minor sort of uh, circle on that side. So to me, that, that I was a little worried about that. So I asked that I get uh, just the, the threaded sides. And so it turned out I didn't need them for that job and, and used, used uh, the uh, the preferred I-beam clamp. Uh, but uh, what worked out on this job that I'm telling you about now is that instead of the I-beam, we had square beam coming through and then this speed C, even though they were both threaded, that worked just fine. 
Uh, now I went ahead and, and ordered the, uh, the fixed sides for all of these. So now I've got plenty of speed seas uh, and I would show them to you, but they're on, a, on another month long job. So they're, they're not available. We had the uh, I-beam clamps and then we used uh, quite a few cheese burls. So cheese burls are just a way to put uh, pipe on top of each other. So either, so you, and you put them 90 degrees. So speed rail goes in here, speed rail goes here, and this is a fixed one. So it's, it's not moving. You're just um, uh, putting pipe 90 degrees to itself. Then there's the swivel cheese burl. And here you can have your pipe on top, you can have it on an angle, you can have it 90 degrees. Uh, and once the, the pipe is tight, there's still some play in, in, your, in your swivel. So um, it's, it's good to have both types, the fixed and the swivel uh, available to you. Uh, then another clamp I didn't use for this job, this guy, which works with U-channel. So U-channel is something that you find often above the, the drop ceilings um, or in more open spaces, more loft-like spaces. Uh, in many business buildings, you'll find U-channel around. And, and I've used it uh, to build out my truck. And also, uh, I made a cart with it. Uh, but this uh, cool uh, little doodad is it has the, the slider that goes in to your U-channel. And then you just tighten it up. And now you've got a, a point, you've got a baby pin that you can work off of um, from it. So just uh, uh, a handy uh, extra clamp to have in your arsenal. Then another thing in terms of tools, you've got the, the hex key, the Allen key. Uh, you can use the ratcheting, which is a, a tool that you can get from, from modern. And it's a 3 16 hex on the tool. It says 5 16 but that's, it's been modified from, from what it was. It was a little box wrench for batteries, but uh, it's 3 16 and that um, works well with, with those set screws. Uh, this is 3 16 as well. It's just a T-handle and it's more manual, so there's no, no ratchet. Uh, then the nut on here on, on modern cheese burls and on this clamp, what works well is actually a, a crescent wrench, but that's a little on the slow side. Uh, so 11 16 box wrench, and this is a, a reversible uh, box wrench works well. And you can also use a 17 mil. So 17 mil or 11 16 will work on, on these nuts. And then fun times. Uh, on other cheese burl, man, uh, other manufacturers cheese burls, that nut can be a different size. So always have the crescent wrench uh, ready. Okay, uh, one more fitting, and that is uh, this guy. Um, we dropped uh, an S30 from above, and we were able to just, you know, put this piece of speed rail onto uh, a cheese burrow. And then uh, you've got a junior receiver on the end of this uh, fitting. And it's another modern studio equipment fitting. And, you know, that is just a double wall so that it can fit on your, your speed rail and away you go. Um, and of course, you have to get it for the right size pipe. So this is one and a quarter. You can also use one and a half. Uh, as far as these go, now with the, 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 uh, the new thread, you can fit these to one and a quarter and one and a half. The old ones did as well, but these are a little better. Um, they just have a little more thread to, to work with. So uh, know your pipe, <laughs> your, your diameter, uh, different, uh, grips, different folks uh, like one or the other. And so if you're getting sub rentals or whatever, make sure you know which uh, diameter pipe you're getting. 
Okay, let's talk a little bit about the plan. So if we've got our 12 by 12 kitchen nook, uh, there was a, a back counter and then there was an island and the island kind of took up a lot of room right there in the middle. There were two uh, square posts that had the speed C's in the back and then that got us a pipe in the back. So that's the first thing we put up. Then we had some horizontal I-beam that was quite low. It was at, I uh, forget, it was like eight feet or something like that, but it, it was nice and low. So we could go off of that with one of our I-beam clamps and then we could go uh, straight up, but then we had to do a little offset up above uh, because it didn't line perfectly with what was up above. So anyway, that gave us a point and that was straight up and then we put uh, the speed rail from the back to the front. And then on the outside, we put uh, another piece of speed rail out front. And I guess this was a little further out here. So we'll put it out here. Um, and we put this on a stand and then put the stand up to the height that we wanted. And then went up with a lift and found a point on the ceiling to grab that pipe and then once that was secure and we had to do a little offset up there as well because it didn't all line up perfectly then we could let go of the stand here so no more stand um, now that was hanging in the air and we put a pipe across there those were our four points so this point was from above and below this was just from above and then these were secured to the the square beams that were in the back then uh, we put a pipe across here because that's where we wanted to have the two s60s and then we put a pipe here and here because that's where we wanted our frame to be and we wanted to have uh, four points on the frame and have the rope be right above the pipe. And that way there wouldn't be any pull forward or back. It would just be straight up. So uh, that's uh, all the pipe that um, we needed to put up. That was our rig. Uh, we had a four by eight frame of uh, half grid that was below our S60s. And on the S60s themselves, we put a uh, two foot black wrap first, but that was too snooted. It, it was too spotty on, on the, uh, the grid below. So we uh, cut that back to just a, a foot uh, on the two sky panels. That hit the uh, four by eight of diffusion. And if I were to do it again, I'd probably do four by six so that it would be a little tighter and stay off the walls more. And then we skirted the frame, the diffusion frame with duvetine. And that came down and, uh, and helped with um, concentrating the light just, just from above. And then uh, dropping down from a back pipe, we had that candlestick and that uh, had an S30 on it. And then from the middle pipe, we hung straight down a uh, ETC LED lustra. Series two. So that kind of gave a nice uh, a spread of blue light, uh, kind of behind the uh, uh, the shelves that were above the counter. So that was our our general uh, rig and approach. And then we brought in the key light, which turned out to be a, a five foot octabank with an eight hundred joker into that. And uh, yeah. It, it worked out well. You know, it's um, a little bit of planning and, and some time uh, ahead of time, like, you know, a whole uh, set day. Uh, that was great. And, and then on the day, we kept moving and we could, kept, we could move quite quickly because we were all prepped to go. So that was that. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. <music>